Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please click the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we are going for something a little bit different and a little bit more light-hearted than usual, and we're investigating the mathematics and statistics of the game of Quasar that is available in the Mass Effect universe. You can go to a casino in Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 3 and play on a Quasar machine. And I absolutely adore the Mass Effect games. I've amassed around 300 hours in all of them, the Legendary Edition included, I guess. So the Quasar game was quite close to my heart. And what is most um, useful, perhaps, is that it's a very easy case that allows us to investigate a lot of complicated and perhaps a little bit counterintuitive concepts in game theory. That is, the value of the game, uh, moves by nature, the optimal way to play a stochastic game that are all quite intuitive when you investigate the optimal way to play Quasar. Quasar is pretty similar to Blackjack, and it differs from it in a couple of varieties, which makes it both a little bit easier and a little bit harder to grasp than Blackjack. So let's first investigate the rules. To play high-stakes Quasar, you've got to first place a bet of 200 credits, that basically intergalactic currency, so you place a bet in money and you want to win money by playing Quasar, and you start with an initial points tally of 1 to 8, and that's equally likely, so 1 to 8 is uniformly distributed, so you start from 1 to 8 points when you uh, start playing the game, and uh, each turn you can make one of three choices. You can either stop playing and pay out, taking however much you've uh, already won, or you can roll either 1 to 8 points again, uniformly distributed, equally likely, or 4 to 7 points. So you've got quite a non-trivial choice every single time you're looking at your points tally and you need to make an optimal uh, choice, an optimal move out of the three options available to you. And here are the payouts. So if you stop playing, uh, your uh, payoff depends on how much points you have already amassed. So if you've got 14 points or less, you get nothing if you decide to stop playing. And then there is an increasing payout until you reach 20 points. So basically the goal is to go as close to 20 points without going bust, without going over, just as in blackjack, as possible. So you've got 50 credits out if you uh, stop at 15, 100 if you stop at 16, 200 if you stop at 17. So you break even basically, uh, if you consider the initial bet size, if you get to 17, then you get 250 if you stop at 18, 300 at 19, and 400 credits, the maximum payoff that you can get if you land at 20. And you go bust if you go to 21 or over, that means that you get zero credits out. And basically, when you consider whether to play Quasar or not, and if yes, how, uh, those two questions are quite relevant. What is the optimal way to play Quasar? What are the optimal moves to make, depending on how much points you've got? And whether it's a good deal, whether you can uh, get more money out than you put in, at least on average, if you play Quasar continuously and if you play it optimally. So here, I'll show you how to very easily uh, decipher the rules of Quasar and the optimal strategy, because there are quite a lot of uh, materials online saying that, yes, you can play Quasar optimally, and you do uh, make money on net eventually, on average at least, so that's one of the few games where the casino's A edge is negative, quite untypically, but they generally don't disclose what is the analysis behind this optimal way to play, how to determine how much do you gain on average, and how to determine which moves to make. So let's uh, decipher it together. And uh, the easiest way to uh, approach these sorts of games, which are basically games with nature, where moves by nature are the random number of points that you roll, if you decide to roll them, that is, and uh, your edge, your input into the game, 
are those choices. Whether you decide to pay out, roll 1 to 8, or roll 4 to 7. So first of all, and that's quite intuitive, is if you get 21 or above, you get nothing. So if you pay out, you get zero. And obviously, if you roll further points, so if you roll 1 to 8 or 4 to 7, no matter what happens, if you've got more than uh, 20 points, you still get pretty much nothing. So that stays um, as it is. And then we can input the payout amounts, the payout values, as per the rules of the game. So again, we're just copying in those numbers over here, and we take into account that paying out if you've got 14 points or lower does not make sense pretty much at all. And then we incorporate uh, the very important notion that a rational player always makes the best um, move they can. So uh, if you look at your points tally, for example, you look at 17, um, you might want to decide what gives you the best expected return, the best expected payoff. Is it paying out, so getting uh, 200 credits out of the machine and parting your ways, or trying to earn more by rolling either 250, 300 or 400 credits if you land on these lucky numbers. So the idea is that the value of each of those positions, given a particular move, needs to be maximized. You need to get the best deal out of the machine possible because, well, this is your agency. You, you can decide whether to pay out a roll 1 to 8 or roll 4 to 7. So here, the maximum is what you're looking for. And finally, we can quite easily investigate what are the values of rolling a particular option at a particular point, uh, given the number of points you've got. So if you roll 1 to 8, and 1 to 8 are equally likely, then your value is the average of the uh, game state values, the value of the game average, over the next 8 points. So basically it's 1 over 8 times the value of the game if you've got one more point, 1 over 8 times the value of the game if you've got two more points than now, and so on and so forth, until you get to 8 points or more, because that's the highest um, point tally that you can roll in one go. And that means that if you've got 20 points, obviously you need to pay out, but that reinforces the fact that rolling 1 to 8 is absolutely meaningless if you already got 20 and you've got the best deal possible, isn't it? If you roll 4 to 7, the idea is very similar. However, you need to take into account that you can only jump 4, 5, 6 or 7 points upward from however many you have amassed so far. So you need to average over 4 points higher than now, 5 points higher than now, 6 points higher than now, or 7 points higher than now. So this would be the value of rolling uh, 4 to 7 at a particular point in time. And obviously, if you've got 20 points and you can pay out the highest amount of credits you can ever pay out, this doesn't make sense either. However, what it allows us to do, it allows us to calculate the value of getting 20 points on the board, and that's indeed 400 credits, given the fact that you can just pay out. What is quite non-trivial here is that we can drag this upwards and get the values of every single position, value of every single points tally, given the randomness of rolling 1 to 8 or 4 to 7, and given the optimal way of playing. And now, to determine the optimal move in each of the uh, conditions, we can use the match function, match the uh, position value, so the maximum uh, value that you can get by playing optimally, match it to uh, the uh, possible outcomes, the possible moves, do exact matches, and then we can use the index function and match the maximum payoff to the optimal move. And we can drag it up and see that if we've got 17 points or higher, it is optimal to just pay out, to stop playing. If we've got 16 points, we need to roll 1 to 8. We need to roll 4 to 7 if we've got 13, 14 or 15 points. Then we need to roll 1 to 8 again if we've got 9 through 12 points. If we've got 6 to 8 points, we again uh, need to roll 4 to 7. If we've got 3 to 5 points, we need to roll 1 to 8. And finally, if we've got one or two points on the board, 
we need to roll 4 or 7. So these are the optimal moves calculated uh, rigorously using the uh, logic of value of the game and uh, moves by nature. However, the final question that we can answer is what is the value of the game overall? Is it worth playing Quasar? And to retrieve this particular uh, intuition from the data we've got, we need to remember that we start with an initial point tally of 1 to 8, all of those being equally likely. So the value of the game is the average of the values of these eight game states, because you can uh, start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8 points with equal probability, which means that on average, the value of one game of Quasar, the value of the expected payoff that you get from the machine if you play optimally is around 242 credits, which is higher than the bet, than the price that you need to pay to play this game. Meaning that every single time you play Quasar, given that you're playing optimally, on average you make 42 credits. And the expected return of playing the game is the value of the game over the price of the game, so 200 credits minus 1, which means that you are earning, on average, 21% on top of your bet every single time you play Quasar, provided that you know this particular optimal strategy, you know where it's coming from, and you do stick to that and play optimally. And that's all there is on how to make money in Mass Effect using Quasar machines and how you can use statistics and basic game theory to inform this optimal strategy. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider support on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.